Did you get it? The package is secured. How should I proceed? Well, open it up and tell me what you find. This could be our big break. The package appears to be some sort of illumination device. Well, do you see any specs? Hundred and twenty watts, and it appears to be bicolor. Hundred hundred twenty? That's not enough power. There has to be more. Wait, hold on. There's a note in here. It just says gotcha. Oh no. Joey? Joey? No. What's going on? Joey? I've got you making a review what? video. You can't, you can't explain to me. You can't <laughs> What's up guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about my most recent short, How to Be an Instagram Filmmaker. sort of a tutorial video so that you guys can see how I shot it with a very limited lighting package. Stick around if you just want to see my process. It was lit with a high-key look, something that's a little bit more pleasing for YouTube. Very different than what you would see in Hollywood, where they shoot more low-key, darker looks. For instance, the whole intro sequence to this video was shot with a more low-key look. And this, where it's very bright, is a more high-key look. However, the techniques I use here can be applied to achieve more low-key lighting. Now the premise of this tutorial is how to get away with using a lot cheaper gear. The light I'm using is the small rig 120B. The reason this light is somewhat cheap is because it has a relatively low output, only 120 watts. A lot of times you'll see people shooting with 300, 600, even up to 1200 watt lights, which have way more power and it's way easier to match them to sunlight. This one does just not match that amount of power, but I'm gonna show you how you can take advantage of it. And with that, let's hop into the tutorial. All right, so my first tip is to bounce, bounce, bounce. Bounce your light whenever you can. The reason why I really love this technique is it allows you to get creative within any amount of space, either when you're in a tiny bedroom like mine, or you're in a big old studio with lots of light needed to fill the space. Bouncing your light off a sheet or a piece of cardboard or a wall like I'm doing right now helps diffuse the light, making it softer and more pleasing on a face, such as right now. I just want to hammer this one point home. Don't be a softy. And by that, I mean don't use a softbox for every single shot. Bouncing will give you a lot more options than using a softbox. You can fill larger spaces, vary your distance, get creative with how much diffusion you want. It just gives you more control. Plus, it's a lot cheaper than buying a softbox. You can literally use just pieces of cardboard or sheets out of your cabinet. You don't have to go out and buy a $100, $200 softbox. Just use whatever materials you have laying around. Plus, sometimes it's just a little bit more fun for me to play around with bouncing rather than just throwing up a softbox. Although I will say softboxes are quite useful sometimes if you just need something quick. But I used bounce lighting for the majority of the shots in my Instagram Filmmakers video, including the talking head. For the talking head, I used a poor man's cove light method where basically you set up multiple bounces, or in my case, just one sheet wrapped around, and then blast light into it, and the hope is that it reflects all around and gives you a really good wrap on your face. The reason I call it the poor man's cove light is that usually you have multiple lights bouncing in, whereas I obviously only had one to work with. Another method of bouncing light is called a book light, which I'm actually using right now. Basically what you do is bounce a light into a surface and then add some diffusion in front of it, and then you get ultra soft light, which is very pleasing for faces and exactly why I'm using it right now. Book lights are super convenient, small, and easy to set up. Alright, so my next tip is going to be supplement natural light. Sometimes it's better just to shoot completely naturally, or maybe just use your light to add a little bit and supplement the natural light. Sometimes I'll just blast at the ceiling in order to bring the level in the room up. Or maybe I just want to shoot it through a curtain to make it look like sunrise or sunset. A lot of times shooting through windows is going to give you the most natural feel. Now another supplemental technique that I'm using right now is bumping up your ISO. Cameras now are just so sensitive and really good in low light. My camera's base ISO is 500, and right now I'm shooting at 1000, and you can probably barely even tell any difference in sharpness. You can use your ISO again to bring up that level as you supplement it with either natural or artificial light. 
now I'm gonna get out of this room because I feel very claustrophobic. So my next tip is to mix color temps. Mixing color temperatures with your lights can make your shot look way more dynamic. Although this is technically a more youtube looking thing where I'm using like RGB features on my V7C, you can also use this to your advantage in more narrative work. It can give you the illusion that you're changing environments or changing times of day. It can make your shot look more eye-catching, like here, or change the mood of your shot, how it feels. Maybe if you want to make your character look sad, you use blue in the background. Or maybe if you want them to look angry, you use red in the background. Or you could just be a YouTuber. Now doing something like this is a little bit extreme, obviously, but I do want to point out one of the fun parts of using the Aperture B7C. You can connect it to your phone and use all sorts of different colors and effects like this one here. There's also more practical ones, such as the cop car. You could do lightning. Or you could make it look like it's just a cozy fire. And a ton of other things. But most of the time, especially in my Instagram filmmakers video, I was using it as a practical light, such as this lamp, to add an edge or maybe another contrasting color. It's mostly used on set just to replace practicals, but honestly, it gives you enough power to where you can use it as an edge light or a background light. It's key to add some separation with your subject from your background. And that's gonna be it for the tutorial part of the video. Now I'm gonna answer a couple questions that you guys were asking in the comments. The most common question, and the thing I got roasted the most for, was my crusty keyboard. But I've got some good news for you. It's been cleaned. Don't you see how beautiful it is now? Another common question, how I did my color grading and editing. So I'm actually kind of ADHD when it comes to editing. I switch back and forth between Premiere and Resolve quite a bit, but this project I did choose to do in Resolve. Another thing that I need to address is my flooding toilet. And yes, I can assure you, it has been fixed. Now all we have to do is fill the hole in the ceiling. Another thing that I wanted to address was how I did this fun POV shot. I was inspired by a recent Jake Fru video to get creative with some of my camera angles and setups, and I hope to do more fun stuff like that soon instead of just staying locked off on a tripod the whole time. Basically, I stuffed a pillow into my backpack, then put in the tripod, then took some belts, strapped them around the backpack and myself so that it stayed tight, then yeah, chucked the camera up top and pointed it at my head and did that cool POV type look. The last thing I need to say is thank you guys so much. I especially want to thank my first 100 subscribers, all the friends and family who have been watching my dumb internet videos for like four years now. It's absolutely wild that the internet and you guys love this video so much, and I'm looking forward to disappointing you all with a lack of any consistent posting. But yeah, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. By the way, have you guys seen this new Apple Vision Pro? I think it's legit.